Good evening. Happy Wake Up Wednesday. Welcome back to Moments with Mary. I must say again that a multitude of events have taken place this week. However, we must continue to search our hearts to be free. There is work to be done. As I was going through a piece of writing yesterday, I came across a quote or a saying uh, written by one of my sisters, Glenda Glover, and it reads, the winds of change are blowing. We must embrace the energy and harness its So today, I will continue to thank our healthcare professionals, essential workers, and caregivers for taking care of us. We must, however, continue to take care of ourselves. So today, I will share a few personal pieces and these pieces, to me, take me back to my childhood, uh, some 4th of July play, and some other remembrances. So, uh, my first piece I will read is entitled, The Shade Provider. This is a tree that we planted as I was as we were growing up. And it reads The red oak shade tree provider stood as tall and strong as did Papa Walter R. Smith Sr. and Daddy Walter R. Smith Jr. The two spun a show of character for lifelong living and learning. Daddy always shared that we should always be able to sponsor our own show in life with a humble spirit. Daddy displayed his belief daily as he worked the farm with Papa. He was a World War II Navy veteran. Whether his reason of thought was a childhood belief or one he encountered he never wavered from that saying. I believe there was more to the World War II experience, which left a lasting impression for life. As a World War II sailor, black men were assigned to the kitchen as cooks, custodians, or servers. Daddy must have hated the duty of a cook. I never witnessed him cooking anything maybe rice on once when mama was away giving birth to one of my siblings. He was adamant about us being self-sufficient and that I have tried to do. Daddy was kind. He didn't have to spank. He would give you an eye of no confidence and you knew what to do if you were misbehaving in a distasteful manner. Papa had the same idea. Papa and Daddy were close friends. Daddy never left his side. When Mom and Daddy married, he brought her to live with his parents, Walter and Levada. To this union came nine siblings. Lots of shade tree stories were shared by Papa and other family members. One such story shared was about Daddy, the youngest of his nine siblings. It is said that Daddy nursed until he was nine or ten years old. They were attending a revival one particular Sunday. Mama Levada was entertaining company on the tree which was a shade church. 
Daddy wanted to nurse. She refused. Daddy didn't agree. He kicked and cried. Dirt and dust flew all around. It is said the nursing was halted that Sunday. The act was a show of character, but what kind? And that was written by yours truly, Mary Hardy. And the second piece is childhood remembrances. Childhood remembrances are always a tug. Someone is always asking you if you remember when something happened in school or at home. I remember using, I remember an unusual incident, such as when I looked for my younger sister in a crowd at school and could not find her. My thought was that she had fallen into the outdoor toilet at school. I remember when a penny had to be added to the grammar jar in Mrs. Grantham's class because someone used the wrong tense of verb. It only happened to my classmates, not me. I can recall my first grade teacher thought I was supposed to be smart because she was mama and daddy as church affiliates. I remember making dolls with bottles and grass rope and watches with bottle caps. It is sometimes difficult to remember. We had shoes which we wore only on Sunday as Sunday shoes. We had to ride the school bus to school an hour during the morning and back home evenings. It is difficult to remember how we had time to complete chores and homework while having fun. It seemed like discomfort, but the times were enjoyable. That's Mary Hardy. And the next piece is entitled Me. Conceived between two great people, a mom and a dad, plan and in love, with a mutual relationship agreed by two and chosen early by my dad. A girl whom he had eyed at eight years old, she never left his conscious space. He knew she would be his lady forever one day, travel through this earthly place, never to leave her alone. Her proud parents of nine children a strong and persistent group cherished by the two. Given lifelong lessons to endure the rocky roads of rash travelers, made life easier to maneuver and to help guide others to a brighter day ahead. Plan and in love by two great people, me. And that was written by Mary Hardy. And the last piece I'll share is entitled Uncle Hubbard and the Burlap Sack. Twas never a dull moment for family and friends among the rolling hills and gullies of Sullivan Hollow, where partials of land spread out among others, purchased per acre for a mere dollar. It was located in the sandy hills of South Central Mississippi. During the blistering summer, it was hot, and during the winter, it was extremely nippy. Summer crops totaled peas, corn, cantaloupes, carriage, carrots, cucumbers, and watermelons. Summer foods were plentiful, pleasant to eat, and made meals for the daily after 11. June was not only vegetable harvesting month, for June bugs zoomed through the humid air, vulnerable to be caught, and tail tied to a string to be pulled with despair. A curious uncle added mysterious excitement to our summer days. He was nosy, well-liked, and we were always anxious to see him. 
I was more anxious than my siblings. I was told that he considered me his favorite niece. You see, I was surprised on a hot, humid summer evening. Uncle Hubbard came to visit. As he departed the house, he placed me in a brown burlap sack instead of a watermelon. He tossed me over his shoulder, ready to be eaten by his chaps. I thought about being cut, sliced, and served on a plate. Down for heaven. And that's Uncle Hubbard and the Burlap Sack. Written by yours truly, Mary Hardy. And I've shared these pieces today leading up to 4th of July, because they make me think about the 4th of July. Because we never celebrated that much. Things didn't change uh, on the 4th for us. We continued to do the normal uh, chores that we did uh, daily. So today, I want to, again, thank you very much for listening and watching. Please take care of yourselves. Mask more so now than you have been. Stay healthy. Speak up with dignity. Pray for peace and justice. Vote. Complete your census. And always remember that public policy begins on your street. I want you to continue to pray for my mom and my sister-in-law who are ill. I want again, thank you for listening and watching. I love you. And hopefully I'll see you on Friday. I know all of you will be preparing Fourth of July, but I hope to come back with something to say on Friday. So again, I'll say I love you, goodbye, and I will see you on Friday. Thank you again for listening.